stressed as possible that's the most important thing because you're going to need it you're going to need all the strength you're going to need all the energy you can like i'm not playing you're going to need just be mindful that it will get hard it will get difficult just don't give up because it's not easy sometimes you just have to get to the point where you just tune everybody out it's quite unfortunate because the steps you have to go through just to get to this point like i cannot imagine someone having to stop at this point simply because they can't proceed further like i feel like it you're just there a few more weeks to go you know guys hey 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 oh my <laughs> i look jacked up and the way i look is exactly how i feel wow week three wow week three. Oh my god i think i got too much light here but we're just gonna do what we got so what had happened was, <laughs> if you're just seeing this video, guys, um, I recently applied to an airline company, went through the application process, fast forward, I got a training data signed, and I'm currently in training, and this is the end of week three, and the training is for six weeks, and I just ended week three. Today's Saturday. Thankfully, I did not have a class on Saturday this week because week three was crazy. Week three was a lot. Week three was a lot to memorize. One thing I will say is if you did apply to the airline company that I applied to, week three had a lot of content, but as hard as it was, it was manageable. As overwhelming as it was, it was manageable. So I'm not sure if they're going to change the structure or they're going to keep it or they're going to keep the structure the same way. The content for week three actually started Saturday of week two. So essentially on Friday, Saturday, we did medical and then following, which is week three, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we did emergency equipment and drills. It was a lot. It was a lot. One thing I will say is the company that I'm training with currently I personally feel that they have done all they can to give us the best possible resources and the best instructors. Like, I've never been in the aviation industry. I have no idea. Like, even though once I applied to become a flight attendant, I watched several YouTube videos. That being said, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and do so. Hit that subscribe button now. Support my next location, okay? Shamelessly gonna plug that in. <laughs> but yes, even though I did watch several YouTube videos and stuff like that about what training is like, what the job is like, and all that, I did not really get content on what the content of the training was, what the structure and stuff like that. And one thing I will say is if you haven't seen anything like that, don't worry don't worry it's not relevant it, it won't make any difference if you knew what you were going to study and you come in and actually study in it it makes no difference because for me I came with a clean slate I had no idea what to expect I had no idea what sort of information to expect and I'm still able to handle it so if you're out there trying to look for information to know exactly what you're going to be study, studying it's not worth it it's it's really not because you're going to overwhelm yourself the process is meant to stress you out and push you beyond your comfort zone that's the whole point because when you start the actual job it's not going to be roses the whole time there are going to be a lot of pressure point and stressful moments so the structure and the nature of everything right from you arriving to the to the airport if you fly in you having to share room with somebody you don't know 
and then going to class, being in class with people, having to work in teams and groups, like everything has been put together to simulate the actual real world as you start the job. So be open-minded and just take it easy on yourself. Back to the point that I was trying to make. Um, yes, yeah, so I looked for videos, but I didn't find anything with regards to the content that was shared. But if you apply to the airline company that I applied to, and I know we all know who they are, you know, we all know who they are. You know who they are. I know who they are. Trust the process. They're going to tell you this several times in week one when you start off to trust the process. When they say study content for week one Monday, don't go to Tuesday yet until we're there. Follow instructions. Like, I've only been here for three weeks, right? And one thing I've noticed is that everything layers up. It's a step-by-step -step process. You might feel that you're missing out because other people are probably just studying ahead and knowing more than you but you do not have to do that trust the process and believe it when they tell you that all you need to go is to take it day by day all you need to do is to take it day by day because we two was a lot we two was a lot of information but we two mimicked the day-to-day -day life of a flight attendant and with my perspective on week three is emergency situations whether it's medical or evacuation or issues with the aircraft or whatever, you know? So week two for me was a little bit more intimidating because I feel like that was going to be the day-to-day -day activity, like day-to-day -day things that you're supposed to do as a flight attendant, things you should do at the start of every flight, during boarding, during um, what, in-flight, service, like everything, right? And then week three, it's more so emergencies, you know, whether it's medical or actual emergency where the plane is like coming down, like, hey, drills and stuff like that. So even though it was overwhelming and it was a lot because you have to learn a lot of commands and you have to learn a lot of things verbatim and you have to learn a lot of actions verbatim, like to the T, it wasn't that intimidating for me. It was, I, I did get anxious, anxious though, like I got overwhelmed at a point, especially on Thursday, because how the thing, how everything was structured was that we give you all the content during the week and then Thursday, because of the nature or the practical nature of the content that we were taught, they gave us the day before the assessment day for everybody to practice, to run through every single thing, just to get that experience, that uh, repetition or, or repetitive motion going, because honestly when you start before i continue when you start the practical aspect of this right the training you might think that because you might think that you need to get as much practice as possible in the cabin mock-ups that they have but honestly all you need is one attempt using the cabin mock-up like the actual plane mock-ups all you need is one attempt and then if you do it properly you get a photographic memory of everything and then you don't necessarily have to physically be in the mock-up but even if you're in your hotel your house wherever you are you can imagine where everything is because you've seen it at least once so I know that at several points in time whenever we got in the mock-up to try something physically with the actual plane everybody wanted to do it two three times four times five times as many times as possible and they were like no all you need is just one and it's true all you need is just one one time in there, just make sure you're paying attention to everything. You're listening to instructions. You, you, you're, you're listening to feedback. Once you see everything and where it is, you can always visualize it. And that's what I did. I was only in that mock -up plane for one of the evacuation drills just one time. And mind you, you're all going to do it together. So even though you only do it one time, if my class has what 25 people I will see 24 other people do the same thing over and over again but most people take it for granted they don't pay attention but there's a reasoning behind it because even though I am not doing it 25 times I actually get to do it one time and see other people different people do it 24 times so technically I have 25 opportunities in that moment to see this get done isn't that enough for you to at least be able to visualize it outside of the facility, outside of the plane itself, you know? Mm -hmm. So do take advantage of that and pay attention.
pay attention. But uh, moving forward, um, as I was stating, I feel like the company that I apply to or I'm training with right now has done all they can to give us the resources, the instructors for us to be successful. Like, I cannot stress this enough. Me, for example, I have never had any airline experience. Never, no idea. All I knew was that, hey, we're switching things up. I'm leaving the corporate world to go become a flight attendant. This is what we're doing. And even me, I have been able to assimilate myself into the process, you know? Fine, everybody understands things differently and stuff like that, but if I think if you follow the resources they've given you and you pay attention and you listen to the instructors and you take every single day, every single moment seriously, you will be successful. It's not easy. I'm not here to tell you, oh my God, it is easy, it is simple. But if you put in the work on your assessment days, it will feel like a piece of cake. I'm telling you, like, I'm not here to say that right off the bat it's easy. You're going to understand everything. Because mind you, you're stressed. You've gone through a week where you've been shown what the day-to-day -day activities of your job will be as a flight attendant. And then you get to the following week where they're showing you, hey, as part of your job, you're probably going to have to end up being a nurse, a doctor, a firefighter, everything, you know? And then you're talking about evacuation drills. What if you land in water? What if you land in the middle of the ocean? How are you going to be able to get people off the plane? You know, it's quite intense. And then we had our ditching day in week three as well, where we got in the pool and it's just, it was a lot, you know, it was a lot mentally. And um, don't ever underestimate that portion of the process as well, because in this mission, it's all about study, 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 get the grades and pass or do the practicals and exceed and be successful. And we also have to think about your mental well being. At, moment, at certain points in time, you have to do things for yourself. Personally, this is my routine. My class, I got the early section class, so my class starts at 6 a.m. So I get up at 4, get ready, go to class, come back. Our instructors are super cool. Our class is actually supposed to be, I think, from 4, from 6 to like 5 or 6 in the evening. But they try as much as possible to get us out as early as possible, around 2 or 3 or 4. That way we can get time to study. So that's really helping out. But then my routine is I go to class, pay attention take notes if necessary, engage in activities, pay attention to feedback, accept feedback, receive feedback, and take a mental note of the feedback I'm being given. Once I come back, I do something for myself. Um, if you want to go to the gym, you can go to the gym. For me, I take a few minutes step or walk as I'm waiting for the shuttle in the morning, and then I use the staircases in the building as well. That way I can get some steps in so I can get my heart beating and my body just doing active stuff. So when I come to the hotel, I cannot go to the gym. Like, I'm not. I, I am way too exhausted. I cannot. It's not, it, it, it's not my ministry right now. But I relax. I watch YouTube videos. I listen to music just to decompress because the classes are intense. You're doing so many things during that period that you're in class. You're having to physically do so many things. And sometimes it can get overwhelming, you know. And for me personally, I typically need a second or a moment to decompress and compartmentalize everything or the content that I've received. So um, I need that. Whatever works for you, works for you. I know my roommate, for example, works out. She goes to the gym, she takes a break, she does something for herself. So um, just make sure you're taking care of you as well because you don't have to necessarily rush through or study every single second, every single minute. If that's how it works for you, that's fine. But for me personally, I have to take a moment to step back, decompress, compartmentalize, do something for me, take my mind off of the, um, the academic portion and just relax. And I had my anxiety moment the day before the assessment day because th the day before the assessment day was the day for us to practice everything that we've learned, right? So no new content was shared on the day before. The assessment day. Um, it was exactly what we've been doing the whole week and part of week two and we got the opportunity to practice in the actual plane mock-ups and stuff like that. So yes on Thursday I panicked because majority of us were like not necessarily that we didn't know the information or what to do it's just that it's a lot of information and we just got the information two three four days ago <laughs> and you're getting tested on tomorrow so it was a lot and then I was like so stressed out but for me personally before every assessment I like it when I'm anxious or scared or um, when I feel that uneasiness because for me one I think it pushes me to study more and then two um, it means that I'm concerned about it like it's in my brain that I need to pass this. I need to do something to make sure that I succeed with this tax. So it's actually a good thing for me. I was good 
but once I had my anxiety quote attack, not necessarily an anxiety attack, but you get what I'm saying. My panic on Thursday, on Friday surprisingly, so even Thursday I studied so much that I started feeling pain at the back of my head. Like I tried to absorb so much content that it was like, no, no, no bueno, we're taking a break. Stop, 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 nothing, nothing more. No, no, no. Take take it easy, take a break. I slept early on Thursday. The funny thing was on Friday, which was the day of the assessment, I was completely at ease. I was comfortable. I was like, my first assessment was like at six in the morning, which was like the start of the day, the start of the class. I was done with that. And we did four assessments. Mind you, the reason why I was panicking the day before was because we were going to do four assessments on Friday. Four assessments. We were going to do four assessments. It was going to be the written assessment, the evacuation drills, and then we did the EMVs, and then your pre-flight checks, equipments and stuff like that, knowing how to use it and how to check them. So it was not an easy day for assessments. But all in all, week three came to an end. We succeeded. I got 100 on everything. So um, your girl did what she needed to do to make sure that she was moving on to the next step. Next week, fun stuff are going to happen. I believe we're grabbing our uniforms next week. So yes, yes, yes. But to end it all for week three because I'm almost out of battery power and I do not want to put another battery in and come back again. Take your time. Trust the process. Use the resources they give you. Like when they say trust the process, as cliche as that may sound, it is the truth. I've done it. I trusted the process and it's working for me. Review your resources. Pay attention in class and involve yourself in any activity. Take everything you do in that class seriously. Don't undermine anything. And listen to feedback. People tend to get defensive when they're given feedback. No. If an instructor gives you feedback, take it in good faith because if they pass you, their ID number is attached to you. Because if they sign off that you're good on something, they're tied to you. If you go out on the line and you go do something wrong, it's going to come back to them. So they are all in as you are. Like, it is it's it is what it is. So yeah, but fear was a lot. Fear was a lot. I have heard rumors that week four and five is even worse, but... For me personally, I haven't experienced week four or five, but I feel like having been able to go through week one, two, and three, surviving that, the rest I feel will be easy because whatever I did in week one, two, and three were the foundation stuff. So I feel like once my foundation is strong, and at this time also I already have a rhythm, a flow of how to learn how to utilize my resources, how to access my resources. So I don't have to worry about that. Ooh, my lips are looking crusty, guys. Trust me. We are hustling and bustling here. So we are not, this is not me. This is not flight attendant Priscilla. This is flight attendant trainee Priscilla. And that is a hustle. So don't worry. You, you guys, you're going to see me eventually. But now, no. This is the real tea. This is the real deal. This is how it, it, it's, it's looking right now. It's not pretty. But what matters is that we come back with our wings. So like I was saying, um, in week one, I barely knew how to utilize my resources, where to go to get things. Even though you've been shown how to do it, you're new. You don't know the platform. So it takes time to get comfortable with the resources you have, how to use them, and how to access them. I feel that right now I'm at a point where I know how to access my resources, where to go, and how to find them, and how to use it. So that's a good advantage because right now, because initially I had to worry about how to get the information I needed to worry about studying. So then it's worry one, worry two, worry three, just stress all over. But now once I've gotten the handle on that, one stress eliminated. The only thing I need to be concerned about right now is actually being able to absorb the content, understand, and reproduce or replicate. So that's where we are and that just takes time and effort, you know? So to sum everything up, I know I've attempted to sum everything up for a while now, but um, yes, the resources you're providing is very useful. Use the resources, stay focused. I know I haven't mentioned drama and all of that yet. I don't think I said anything about that in week two, but you will get sent home if they have to send you home. You will get sent home. Like you have to take your assessments very seriously. You will get sent home. Their requirements, fine, a passing grade is 80%, but you're required to keep an average of 90%, right? So in my case, for example, my first assessment, I had, I think, what, 97? 
the second one I had a hundred the third one I had a hundred which is the one I did yesterday and then my EMDs and my drills and my equipment checks and stuff like that I got a hundred on all of those I passed all of those so it's a I think it's a pass or fill with those practical stuff and then with the assessment it's when it's graded according to like hundred whatever whatever so you have to maintain an average of 90 percent so my argument is now that you're learning things in bits make sure that you're getting 100 percent in all of them or if nothing at all 95 should be your minimum if you want to risk it and get make 90 your minimum that's up to you i feel that's too risky because anything can happen in the final exams but i feel like the the new stuff that you're learning right now from week one week two week three week four and week five those information have been are being given to you in bits right because at the end of week five or no in week six you're going to have a final exam that will include content from everything you've learned since week one so it might get harder then or it might actually be easy if you actually did put in the work to study the content from week one to week five get what i'm get my drift okay so my point is aim for 100 now that way even if for whatever reason something happens during the final exam and you don't get 90 you get 80 because all you need is an 80 minimum to pass your average will still be over 90 because you were getting 197 and the rest during the weeks before so take it seriously because i have heard um, from other people, other graduating class that people have gotten sent sent home um, the day before graduation or the Monday, the week of graduation. So you have to take things seriously. When you come here, if you have to cut everybody in your life out, cut everybody out because you need to focus. You need to focus. The information is being thrown at you like a water hose. Yes, that's how the water, the not the water, the information is being thrown at you. So you don't have time to deal with drama. Even at the training site, you don't have time to be involved in drama on the training facility, the training ground. This is not the time to be involved in drama, whether it's in your personal or even at the training site. Like, stay out of it. Stay out of the drama. It is not worth it. If you want to study on your own, you study on your own. For me, I like being by myself. I like studying by myself. Um, I don't like group studies. It's never worked for me in the past. I pick up and register things that are said. So if I'm in a group setting and people are spewing out wrong information, it will register for me. So I don't like that conflict. Yeah, I don't have time. I don't have time for that conflict. And I visually pick up things as well. So um, I, I don't like that conflict. So even when we're grouped up and we're getting ready to get assessed, I put he ear earphones in my ear. My I put heads earphones in my head, my ears, just to block out any noise or sound or anything because I don't want anything wrong, wrong information conflicting or whatever. So yes, but stay out of the drama. Use your resources. Trust in the process. I know, I know it's hard to do so when you're so anxious to figure out what's next, what's next, but. Believe them when they say trust in the process. They're here to set you up for success. That's it for week three. Hustle continues. Week three was a lot, but we made it through. We were successful. So we're just going to keep that momentum going until graduation day. Once again, if you do have an event day coming up, I saw a couple of you yesterday when I was waiting to get assessed. I saw a few of you coming for your event day or leaving after your event day. Um, all the best. Best of luck. Remember to be yourself. Trust the process. I do have a playlist at the bottom of this video in the description box, which gives you all the tips and tricks to be successful for your event day or how to become a flight attendant in general. Um, so please go ahead and click on that playlist and watch the entire playlist. I've got some good stuff for you guys. But yeah, this is week three and we're looking forward to week four and if you're new to my channel hit that subscribe button also give this video a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comment section below share my video guys i know you guys are watching the content because the views are going up but nope you're not subscribing i i, I don't get it how are you going to support me if you're not subscribing if you don't subscribe how do i bring more content you know how I, that cor you see how that correlates yes so yeah, subscribe my channel, share my channel, share it on YouTube, share it on TikTok, share my content wherever you want to share it. I could use any visibility as much, any visibility at all right now. So I do appreciate the support. Thank you guys. Checking out on week three. See you in week four. Bye-bye.